Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PBCSN, the ripoff of ESPN. And we are here today to talk PTI. Excuse me. Do you mind if we roll that again? <laughs> roll like. Welcome everybody to the PBC SN. We are the ripoff of ESPN and we are waiting for funding from the Saudis. Now we are here today to do PTI, but it's a ripoff. And today we're gonna to be talking about a broad range of topics. I'm your host, Mitchell Bernstein, here alongside John, the counselor from the play-by-play -play sports broadcasting camp, as we couldn't get any actual analysis. And we also have Blake, an incredible Florida Panthers super fan. Now let's get into it with some hockey. I know this one's up your route. So really, do you believe sure. that the Florida Panthers are out of it yet? Or they're going to be able to come back with a win tonight? You know, I think the Florida Panthers aren't out of it yet. I mean, we've seen it in every single series before. We've gone with three straight wins, which is what I think we can do again. I think Bobrovsky has been pretty, like, he's been up here for some of the series, like for some of the earlier playoff games, and he's just kind of a step down. I think our defense is also kind of getting lackadaisy at some times. We're letting too many pucks get through and they're winning too many board battles along the walls. So I think if the Panthers defense steps up a little bit and we just keep fighting for pucks on offense and we keep getting more shots on goal, we're gonna be able to do some great things and I think we're gonna get three straight wins. Ladies and gentlemen, I want all of you to open your eyes and look at what this young man is wearing. <laughs> what do you think he's going to say? He is a Florida Panthers fan, a diehard, a biased person, okay? No, I have not. two words for you. Jack Eichel, best player on the ice Gosh, for either dude. team. Forget about anybody else. He will win this series for Vegas, and it's in Vegas, right? This game is tonight, in Vegas. Yeah. Tonight. Teams win on their home ice, okay? They will take care of business tonight. And the Florida Panthers also have been a lot more stellar on the road, too. Their clutch, Matthew Tuchuk, our leading scorer in the playoffs. Carter Verhage, the overtime hero. We have so many more balance on our roster with depth and all of these things that Vegas does not have. And once we get more pucks on the net, we're going to beat Aiden Hill, and we're just going to keep winning. We're going we're gonna to win the series. I mean, as you can see, we have better PT high hosts because that's the only thing that we spend money on is really getting analysts or recruiters. So that's great to hear that you guys have some stark different opinions on what is going to happen in the Stanley Cup Finals. Sorry. As I know, it's very heated between every single Panthers fan and everyone against the country. Now let's go over to another heated topic, and that is the results of the NBA Finals. We saw the eighth-seeded Miami Heat go down in a gentleman's sweep 4-1 against the favorited Denver Nuggets. Now I gotta know, did Miami even have a shot? Let's start with you, John. No, the Miami Heat had no shot in this. This kid, dude, Listen, I'm sorry. I know you're a Miami guy, right? Yes, but yeah. We have yeah. to be realistic here. The Heat, as an eight seed, did some very impressive things. Yeah. But the Nuggets, all season long, were the best team in basketball, and they had the best player in basketball on their side. Nikola Jokic, best basketball player in the world, and his teammates around him stepped up. Look at what Jamal Murray did in some yeah, crucial moments of the sure. season. Uh, look at what Bruce Brown was able to do. Other guys stepping up in a big way for this Denver team. Listen, a lot of credit to Miami for what they did to get to the finals. But they had no chance. You know, I feel like Nicole Jokic, Shamal Murray are both stellar players. I was shaking in my boots any any time they ran the two man game together as a Miami Heat fan on that couch, you know, watching the game last night. I think the Heat did actually have a chance. I felt like our decision making wasn't there and we didn't really have the most healthy team. I mean losing Victor Oladipo was a big piece, which you agree. And having Tyler Hero out for those four games, which I think Eric Spolster did make a bad decision of not putting him in the game. As a Heat fan, we have to be honest with ourselves. Eric Spolstra made some really horrible playing decisions throughout the series, not putting in Kevin Love early and leaving him out until game two or three. Eric Spolstra did make some flaws. And not putting in Tyler Hero, I don't care if he had a broken hand. He probably could have shot better than Max Struess and Gabe Vincent in the series because, like, they couldn't even make anything. I think we needed more fresh players. Even though we had a great run in a series, I think Jimmy Butler taking that shot with 20 seconds left, 15 seconds left in the game, was the worst shot he made all season. I was like... It just makes you think as a Miami Heat fan, like, why are we, do we keep falling short? And it's these little mental decisions that we keep making. If we were better, I think we could have won the series. Yeah, and I want to clarify that Jimmy Butler's scoring went down to 20 points a game in that series compared to the runs that a lot of Miami Heat fans talk about. Now, I got to know, was this Jimmy Butler early series magic just like a fluke? 
or do you believe that Jimmy Butler was able to perform as the best player in the Miami Heat? There's no way that this Jimmy Butler was a fluke. I mean, you can literally see it. He's such a he's such a competitive player. I mean, when you're going up against a team like the Nuggets with that much size and that much like great depth, I mean, you're talking about like Aaron Gordon, who is an outcast for the Magic, an outcast for so many other teams, and you gotta give credit credit to the Nuggets coach Malone, who really just like works these guys into the system. Jimmy Butler was just outplayed by Jamal Murray. It's plain and simple, and by that whole defense, they kind of figured him out. And I think he, he is a great player, but he, him, he, him mentally was not just there for the final games of the series in the season. And that says to me, it was a fluke. You just said it yourself. Jimmy Butler was outplayed by Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray is not a great player. He's a very yes, good he player. Yes, he is. But Jimmy Butler had a great first couple of rounds and really fell off. If you're talking about a high-level player who's going to win championships, you have to perform in the postseason from start to finish. Jimmy Butler didn't do that. But, like, I don't think a fluke is too far, what I'm saying. I think he ended up getting not hot at the right time, and he kind of slumped. I don't think that's a fluke because we've seen him do it before. I think also the role players of the Miami Heat, they stepped up in these key moments, but they just couldn't give Jimmy enough help. Like, I mean, Heat fans, we couldn't really expect him to put up 40 a game in the NBA Finals against Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. Yeah, he did it against a banged-up Giannis. Yeah, he did it against Chris Middleton. But those guys are not at this level as Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. I feel like the, like, the Nuggets' defense was a lot better than all of the Eastern Conference final teams that we've placed up against in, you know, yeah. Let me tell you, the Miami fan is definitely backing up his team, and we see the opposing coming in strong here on the PBCSN, the ESPN ripoff. Saudis, please give us funds. We're waiting right now. Great to hear from some hosts we found down the street. Once again, this is your permanent anchor, Mitchell Bernstein, here alongside John from SBC and Blake Quillian, the Miami Heat fan.